Now, in our previous topic, we did learn about supervised learning and how exactly it works. Apart from that, we also looked into the different types of supervised learning algorithm that is regression and classification and again what kind of algorithms we have in regression and what kind of algorithms we have in classification in this video we are going to learn about unsupervised learning algorithm like as the name suggests unsupervised learning is just the opposite of supervised learning it is a machine learning technique in which models are not supervised using the training data so if you could just recall in supervised we had been passing our data with some labels but in supervised or unsupervised learning we don't actually have the labels instead the model itself find hidden patterns and insight from the given data it can be compared to learning which takes place in the human brain while learning new things let's just shorten the theoretical part and let me tell you in a nutshell what we mean by unsupervised learning it is a type of machine learning in which models are trained using unlabeled data set okay so just remember the key point over here is unlabeled data set so we don't have a label over there so a machine learning algorithm our machine learning algorithm that we are going to pass the data in they will be not learning from any labels as we don't have there they will try to learn something automatically find some patterns some designs from the data and then give us result okay unsupervised learning cannot be directly applied to regression or classification problem because unlike supervised learning we don't have the input data but no corresponding output data so we do have the input data but we don't have actually the output data that is corresponding that is what tells us that what we have to predict out the goal of unsupervised learning is to find the underlying structure of data set group that data according to similarities and represent that data set in a compressed form so i know this might have just scaled up but let me give you a brief example of what about it suppose the unsupervised learning algorithm is given an input data set containing images of different cats and dogs this example again is quite famous about cats and dogs so again once we start with neural network and cnn we are going to solve and build a classifier which will be able to just predict out cats and dogs but as of now the algorithm is never trained upon the given data set which means it does not have any idea about the features of the data set the task of the supervised learning is to identify the image features on their own so the task is not actually to classify things but to get out some design some patterns over there so unsupervised learning algorithm will perform the task by clustering the image data set into groups according to the similarities between images okay so let's look into an example unsupervised algorithm is helpful in many places we do use supervised learning right now in the industry but it has been told that the future of machine learning or the future of the world lies in unsupervised learning because we don't actually have labels and our computer is learning everything by itself so that's the future of ai right now in the market we are using more and more of supervised learning okay so unsupervised learning is helpful for finding useful insights from the data unsupervised learning is much simpler as a human learns to think by their own experience which makes it closer to real ai so the ideology behind ai was just mimic the human brain more of neural network stuff but the ideology of ai is somewhat similar to mimic a human brain and that is where unsupervised learning comes into play so this is the training data the full we have a bunch of vegetables we just pass out the vectors vectors if you go to recall we have already talked about what is vectors in our previous courses and the training set is then passed into our unsupervised learning algorithm it's an unsupervised algorithm and then this algorithm predicts out the result okay. so we pass in the test set so from this training set our algorithm is able to just get out some features which might be able to get out some patterns let's say 
it has found out a pattern that which is specific for banana something for apple then something for watermelon or lemon okay so that is where the unsupervised learning algorithm is working and at the end we are getting out something like this kind of result so that is about unsupervised learning now let's look into the different types of unsupervised learning that we are going to discuss in this course. So basically unsupervised learning are broadly classified into two types that is clustering and association. Clustering is a method of grouping the objects into clusters such that objects with most similarities remain into a group and with less similarities or no similarities with the objects of another group. Okay. Cluster analysis find the commonalities between the data objects and categorizes them as per the presence and absence of those those common factors let's give me let me give you an example of it so over here we have some data points this is a graph where we have some data points okay now let's point out now from this data it will be able to just clustering what it will do is it will cluster these people in a different group. Let's say these are people who are highly like to be giving a positive feedback to a movie. And these are the people who will give negative review. So that's where clustering helps out. Then the next algorithm the type is association An association rule is an unsupervised learning method which is used for finding the relationship between variables in a large data set if we have a very big data set i'm not talking about somewhere where we have 10 20 features but more of 100 or 200 or 500 features in that cases association is something which we use a lot an association rule it finds the relationship between variables in the large data set. It determines the set of items that occurs together in the data set. Association rule makes marketing strategy more effective. So if you are someone who is looking for business analytics, then this is something which probably you are going to use a lot. Now, such as people buy x items are also tend to purchase y items so what i mean by this if you're buying these shoes of puma then this person this is a person who buys shoes of puma then this person is probably someone who might buy shoes of let's say nike so that's how your marketing strategy can work that we should just target out this kind of people where he can just buy out some other player or else there is one more person okay, who buys shoes worth that is less than 500 rupees and this is a guy who buys shoes always which is greater than 2000 rupees so a marketing person will just analyze that this is the person that i should be targeting for big brand company shoes and this is a person which i should be looking for local brands so how the association rule works so these are the two algorithms that we are going to learn in association that is pc and nda and in clustering we are going to learn about k means clustering that's it for this video in our next video we are going to learn about reinforcement learning so let's jump into our next video